welcome and a sincere greeting from Digital Church. We are blessed to have you journey with us whenever and however you are watching and listening to us. There is a dedicated email address for any comments, any prayer requests, or if you require further information. And please do hold us in your prayers as we prepare each week for the service. My name is Stephen and I'm the Minister of Digital Church. We begin with a prayer of preparation. Let us pray. Gracious God, your love has called us and here we are gathering in your name. Gracious God, we open our hearts and minds and eyes to you again at this time as we come to worship. And as we worship you, living Lord, transform and renew us, awaken our spirits, show and inspire us to respond to your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We can sing alongside or we can listen to this hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So we come with our opening prayers. Let us pray. O Lord my God, we have gathered in awesome wonder to worship and praise your name. Not because you need our worship, 
but because the joy of your love for us flows out of our lives. In song, in prayer, in how we respond to your word, in responding to one another. O oh Lord my God, we have gathered to give you thanks for the many blessings we have received. Loving God, help us to live a life of gratitude, to say thank you for all that we have received over and over again in the days and weeks to come. Living, loving God, we come to you in worship, knowing that there have been times this week when we have fallen short of your glory, when we have failed to live up to your will for our lives when we have said and done things that we regret, or when we have stayed silent or inactive, when we could have spoken up or indeed stood up. In the stillness, we bring our sorries to you, Lord God. Even as we confess our sins, we know that you have already forgiven us, that we are loved and accepted just as we are. But we keep up this practice of naming our mistakes because it helps us to grow, to be accountable, to be honest with ourselves and with you, Lord God. Thank you for your grace, already reaching out to us for the week ahead. Bless us now as we worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so I invite you to say together in the Lord's Prayer, using words that you are familiar with and in whatever tongue is natural to you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We share in the hymn, O love that wilt not let me go. I can no 
not close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promises not vain that morn shall to That liftest up my head I dare not ask to fly from thee I lay in dust life's glory dead And from the ground there blossoms red Life that shall end Our reading for this act of worship is taken from the book of Genesis, the first book in the Old Testament. It's Genesis chapter 21, beginning to read at verse 8. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Agar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Agar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Agar, from heaven, and said to her, What troubles you, Agar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy, and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran 
and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Thanks be to God. Amen. Every day during filming there is a call sheet containing all the information to shoot the next day's scenes. The first actor listed on the call sheet is known as the star. They're getting paid the most. They're the most important person in that day's story. They can make things happen or stop them from happening. They set the tone for everyone else on the set. If the story of Genesis chapter 21, those words that we've just heard, was made into a TV show or into a movie, who would be on the top of the call sheet? Would it be Abraham, the father of nations? Or the baby playing Isaac, the promised son? It might even be Sarah in a story of trust. Or toddler Ishmael, who also grew up to found a nation. I doubt it would ever be Agar. Agar is, for sure, at the bottom of the call sheet. She isn't the hero. She is not the plucky best friend or the loyal spouse. She is, in many translations, described as a handmaiden or servant. The Bible says that Agar finds out she is pregnant she begins to despise Sarah. I imagine most people's assumption reading this story is that she does so because she thinks she is above herself, thinking she is better than Sarah now that she has a son. But why do we think this? Is it because we assume Abraham and Sarah are at the top of the call sheet, that they are the heroes. Let's imagine for a moment that for Genesis chapter 21, Agar is at the top of the call sheet, that she is the most important person in the story. Well, what do we actually know about her? She's Egyptian. So how did she end up with Sarah? We know that Abraham and Sarah had lived for a while in Egypt. Perhaps they start employing her there. But it's more likely that she was a slave. She is presented with almost no agency in the Bible. She is ordained by Sarah and ordered by Sarah to sleep with Abraham and forced to bear his child. How would you feel if you were Agar. It's perhaps not surprising that when she discovered she was pregnant, she hated Sarah. Then, having been forced to bear this child, who no doubt Sarah intended to raise herself with Abraham, chapter 16 says that she was dealt harshly with by her jealous owner. Sarah abuses Agar and is shown to look down on Agar's son Ishmael in chapter 21, not wanting him to play with her own son, his half-brother. None of this presents a pleasant picture of Sarah, or Abraham for that matter. They have abused Agar and then they have abandoned her. In verse 11, Abraham is said to be distressed, not because of how Agar is treated, but only because of his son. No one cares about Agar. And that is, except God. When Agar fears that she and her son Ishmael will die in the desert, God's angel speaks to her, and God opens her eyes to a well that they might drink and live. God cares what happens to Agar. In chapter 16, she called God the God who sees me, as no one else saw her. God tells Agar 
to go back to Sarah and Abraham. This isn't a message we would give to a victim of slavery or abuse today. But it's the only time we see Agar making a choice for herself. Choosing to trust that God will remain with her, even in the most difficult of situations. Agar was a means to an end to Sarah. And Abraham, a way of having a child, not even a person in her own right. As much as we honour and as we learn from figures in the Bible, they are still humans, still subject to the sins of their culture, of their times and of their personalities. But God valued Ega enough to see her, to send an angel to her in her time of need, not once, but twice. Think about who else in the Bible meets with an angel. Most of them are stories connected to heroes of the faith, Moses, Gideon, Paul, Peter. But angels also appear to the shepherds when Jesus was born, to the mother of Samson, to Mary and to Elizabeth. All people who are considered unimportant within our societies, just like Agar. Agar was a slave. She was a victim of abuse. She was an Egyptian foreigner. She was a runaway. She was a woman. And she was given this gift of an angelic visitation, of knowing that God saw her. In the New Testament, in the first book of the New Testament, called Matthew, in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus told his disciples, do not be afraid. You are more, worth more than many sparrows. The angel also told Agar not to be afraid, because she too, just like the disciples, is worth more than many sparrows. You might know someone who feels like Agar. Just as God saw Agar, God sees them. God sees those trapped in slavery. There are over 50 million children, women and men, all over the world trapped in slavery. Some of them are probably in your neighbourhood. God sees victims and survivors of abuse. Do you notice them? They are likely to be in your favourite coffee shop, in your locality, maybe even in your fellowship or in your church, if you are a part of a fellowship or a church. God sees those who have fled their homes and those who face abuse because of their gender or for whatever reason. Do you see them as God sees them? You might even feel like Agar yourself. You might feel unloved. You might be mistreated. You might be held by others who have averted and given power over you. You might feel like no one notices you in your position today. But never forget, you are number one on God's call sheet. Never forget that God knows who you are. God knows what's going on in your life. Never forget that God sees you, knows you and loves you with no strings attached. If you have been affected by this word, if God has been speaking to you, 
there is on the screen our email address and it will be a privilege to pray for you and with you. Do send any prayer request that you have for yourself or for those who you know are in need at this time. And rest assured, everyone will be read and everyone will be prayed through. And so we come with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. We pray for those who are fleeing persecution or domestic violence. We pray for all those in homes which are not places of peace, but places of anger and places of chaos. We pray for peace in broken nations and broken homes. We pray for women, men and children trapped in the slave trade. We pray for those whom we know. Or we pray for ourselves. Maybe living in an abusive relationship. Maybe held against our will. may find ourselves trapped in an abusive relationship, not knowing which way to turn. But God sees and understands and seeks to hold us all in the very arms of his of his arms. God, you see those who are unseen, those who are trapped in slavery, those caught up in abusive relationships, those feeling very alone and isolated. Bring freedom, O oh God. Bring healing, living Lord. Bring restoration to the fullness of life. Bring hope and peace. Eternal God, we ask for forgiveness for all the times we have looked down on others. We ask forgiveness for all the times we have used power to get our own way even at the cost of other people. We ask forgiveness for all the times that we have sinned against others, for all those times we have gossiped, we have spoken in anger, we have uttered words of hate. We ask that you bless all those people we have spoken and acted against. We ask healing for any hurt we have caused. The Lord hears our prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen. We hear the song, Will you come and follow me?
we go out with an open-hearted God at our side. We go out with a living God in our midst. We face the week ahead with the Spirit of God amongst us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love and all who you seek to love this day and forevermore. Amen.